welcome to my victory. We're so glad that you chose to listen in. We have an amazing show lined up tonight, and we're just so grateful for every person that has commented and told us that you're watching or listening. We're thrilled. We have so many amazing things happening at Victory Family Church. It's just really hard to keep up, but please go to ilovemyvictory.com as you're listening to this and check out every event that's happening. I am Kim Duran. I'm one of the pastors at Victory Family Church, and this is my husband. Yeah, I'm Jason Duran, and uh, we have the privilege of serving as a uh, lead pastors at Victory Family Church. And as you mentioned, uh, I Love My Victory has so many things for you to kind of plug into what we're about. Uh, we come to you every week and we try to bring stories that will encourage you and strengthen you in your walk with Christ. Uh, tonight is no exception. Mm -hmm. I pray that uh, as you listen to us, that you will um, hear the stories that are that are mentioned and that it will bring uh, you know some form of encouragement to you because God is a God of hope. He always has been and always will be. Tonight, I want to share a story with you that happened to me and to our church. You know, God is in the small things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're looking for big explosions, you know, signifying, oh, God did this amazing thing and, and, and it was a huge work. But in the small things, the very small things that you think are insignificant, God shows up. So every uh, two months, we have something at the church that's called Grow. It's a growth session. It's for us to connect with our newcomers, to help introduce them to the vision of the church, the mission that's at hand, and also to get to know them. Well, you know, last week God really put it on my heart to reach out to some people that maybe they haven't been here in about six months or three months. And I couldn't put a face with even some of the cards that I was going through, but I was praying. I said, God, you know, you didn't put this in front of me for, you know, just for me to fill up my time. Right. <laughs> um, but God, I, I just know that you're wanting to reach some, some people's hearts. Mm. So it was so interesting to me Sunday. I'd forgotten, honestly, about sending out letters. I prayed over them. I sent the invitation to come to grow. And I walk in the room and I see these faces of people that I was, I was almost surprised. I was like, okay. I should know these people. And and it was having to come back to me. And when I sat down with one of the ladies, she said, we, we received your letter. And it made such a difference to us. And she confessed to me. She was like, you know, the only reason we haven't been back is because the enemy was trying to tell us, you know, why, why would you go back? Mm -hmm. You know, people probably are wondering why you haven't been back. They probably don't even want you, you know, to come. I mean, you know, we have an enemy he is Satan. He has nothing better to do than to harass us and try to move us right. from God's plan. But it was in the small thing of a letter of reaching out to somebody and obeying the Lord that, you know, God did this. Well, you know, I was, not mm -hmm. to interrupt, but um, the husband of the same uh, family that I think you're speaking of, he mentioned the fact that... Um, you know, that they had received a letter and they say what an encouragement it was to get this letter because it meant somebody wanted them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I thought that was really interesting because mm -hmm. I didn't know that side of the story until just now. And I can't wait to get to know them better. Right. I mean, they, they're they an awesome family and uh, and we do want them. And, right. and you might be listening on this broadcast and you're like, you know, I don't know if somebody wants me around. Right. I don't know what my significance is. Well, we want you. That's right. We want you. God wants you. Uh, we just had an amazing interview a minute ago with our daughter. Yeah. And that's the story that it, you're going to hear in that segment of my story today. It's Amelia Duran. She's 16 years old. She's a real leader um, for the faith, in, you know, to all people, not just her generation. So you want to pray real yeah. quick? And, yeah. And uh, we're going to open with prayer today. Yes. Father, I thank you that... Each and every one that needs to hear uh, the story that's going to be presented today would, would have ears just to, to, to hear what you're saying to them. We thank you that somebody right now is watching, and as they watch, they're going to be uh, just touched by you in a special way that they would know that you're speaking to them. So, Lord, as they listen to this story, I pray, God, that you would open their hearts to receive all that you have for them. It's in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please welcome Amelia Duran. Yeah. Dum, 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 
Welcome back. We are here at the place where we share stories. This is a segment of our broadcast called My Story, and we are so glad you chose to listen tonight. We have an amazing story. I am very honored to have my daughter, one of my daughters, uh, with us tonight. She is young. She is brilliant in many ways. I'm so blessed by your walk with Christ. <laughs> her name is Amelia, and we're just going to hear her story of faith and, and things that she's experienced since she has really grabbed hold of knowing Jesus. So tonight, welcome Amelia Duran. We're so glad to have you, Amelia. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody what you celebrated this weekend? I turned um, 16, so it was pretty fun. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm party with my friends so that was fun <laughs> what was your party uh, I went to La Faria yeah <laughs> now hey you know that that's one thing I love about it she has the most godliest friends around her and their idea of a good time is a good meal at a Mexican restaurant that was awesome so what else do you like to do Amelia um I like to take p pictures I do photography and it's something about a just capturing a moment that someone will hold in their house forever, which is just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. And you're an awesome volleyball player. Yes, I play volleyball for um, the Kings, and I love my friends that I play with, and it's just, it's it's fun to be able to have that. So You guys will have to come watch the Wiregrass Kings and, and my daughter's spike of volleyball. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, I love all your activities, and, and you've had quite a life. At age 16, you're just so much further along than I was. Um, already you've experienced the mission field, and I wanted to have you on the show so other teenagers could hear what the Lord can do with a young life. So can you tell us, what was your first mission trip? Do you recall? Yes, um, I went to Africa, Kenya to be exact, um, the first time I had been praying since I was eight and I just felt like God wanted me to go there and so I would prayed and prayed and I didn't really think it was going to happen because I was so young and one day my grandmother, I was, this had been like over the years, um, and I was turning 11 and my grandmother had no idea about it and she all of a sudden just this trip came up at church. And she, lives in, she lived in Tuscaloosa at that time, and she called my dad and was like, Hey, I really think I want to take one of your children and yourself to Africa for this trip. And my dad was like, Whoa, you know, that's crazy. Amelia's been wanting to go. And so, you know, fast forward, we all got to go, me, Calvary, and which is my brother and my dad and my grandmother. And we went to a little orphanage. And it was, it was so amazing. We just spent time with them, and we ate dinners with them, and it was just, it was, it was very amazing to be able to have that opportunity. About how many children were at that place? There was about 150 kids that stayed there from all ages. Mm -hmm. And what was it like um, being on campus of the orphanage? Um, it was very different. You got to see, you know, people and kids that were so happy with just having almost nothing. You know, mm -hmm. and they had taken these kids off the streets from places that, you know, were just crazy. And the lady there, um, her name was Miss Sherry. And She's the house mama. She is mama the house Sherry. mama. And, you know, these kids came from all over. And there was this one in particular kid that he, as a little child, his, um, his, his mom and dad had, had died. Well, his dad didn't die yet, but... Um, he, they got stuck in a house fire, and his dad ended up dying, and um, Miss Sherry found him after the fact mm. because they, he was trying to get out of the house, and all these people had to come and save him, and he was all alone. He was by himself, and she found him, and he got to come, and it was just a cra crazy stories like that, them being all by themselves and, you know, just seeing her change their lives by doing that. Yeah, orphanages over in areas like that are sometimes a child's only hope. And it's so awesome that they house so many. One day you had a special project in Africa. Would you share that with us about, you know, taking the kids something they looked forward to having yearly, the shoes? Oh, yeah. Um, 
at the end of our trip, we went into this big room, and it was like their, their church, and, you know, we sat each of the kids down. They had no idea what was going to happen, and my dad goes, so first we're going to wash your feet, and then we're going to give each pair of, you know, your the kids a pair of shoes, and the kids just began to cry, and it was it was so touching, and so we washed, we washed their feet, and then we gave them a new pair of shoes, so it was just it was so memorable. That's awesome. And that wasn't the last time you, you were on the mission field. That was only the beginning. And I know God has really given Amelia a heart for missions. So what was your next mission trip? My next mission trip was to um, Mexico. No, I take that back. It was to the Philippines. Um, we went, and I have a, a friend that lives there. Her name's Abby Miller. And her family and herself mm -hmm. are missionaries. To the Philippines. To the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And so we went to visit them and go on this amazing mission trip with our church group. What was the central focus in the Philippines? You know, what, what did you guys do that was most memorable? We went to this small little church they had founded. And it was just these, these people, they just, it was 100 probably to 200 in a small room. And it was just, that was probably the most memorable thing on that trip was just to be able to see the hunger. And then your next trip was Mexico? Mm-hmm. And my best friend lives in Mexico. Her name is Christina Watson. And she, me and her, um, she has this amazing fire. And she just, we, uh, we want to be a part of an orphanage over there because there are so many kids mm. that are just lost and don't know where to go because it's such a poverty over there. And so we went and we got to see a lot of kids and, you know, got to touch them and just have, you know, show them the love of Christ. So it was, it was mm -hmm. great. And that's awesome. I mean, she's experienced so much. And do you think that mission trips kind of make you more aware of the need in the world? Mm, yes, I, I do. Because, you know, we're so blessed here and being able to just, you know, go in our kitchen and get something to eat or get to take a hot shower is just, it's its a blessing. It's and another person's dream. Yeah, mm -hmm. and these people are just, even if they get, you know, to have a jacket, they're just, they're very, mm -hmm. very um, grateful for it. It's been my experience when we would go on mission trips that people could not believe that we would take the time out to care enough to show up in their country, you know, and usually... I've received more than what I I ever expected. I thought I was going on a mission trip, you know, to to see about these these wonderful people and and bring something of hope to them. But I always left changed, and you know I know that's probably your experience too. What do you, how do you feel a mission trip changed your life? I think it changed my life because the first time that I ever went, I was just excited to go because. You know, I was like, I'm going to get to do so much. I'm going to get to give them all this stuff. And, you know, it's going to make me feel so good. You know, and of course I wanted to go over there to show them Jesus. But I wasn't expecting for them to change my life in a way that I was just grateful for everything I had. So mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing is just seeing the gratefulness that and the blessings that we have. Mm-hmm. I want to shift gears just a little bit and talk about what it means to be a Christian teenager in this day. You know, I know that you're my daughter. <laughs> and, um, you know, one thing I tell our kids, you know, sometimes the older kids, we have five. So Amelia and her older brother have seen us grow up as parents. You know, the manual is the Bible, but... Um, we are just, you know, learning. We're not experienced in parenting when you get handed a baby. So they've seen us grow and learn. And um, I thank God that all of our children are serving the Lord. But you teenagers, you face a lot. What do you think is what the number one obstacle for teenagers? I think it would have to be caring about what other people think. Mm. And it's hard to deal with, but... You know, it just, it takes a lot to be able to focus on one thing and know that you're not living to, you know, impress your next friend that might not stay in your life forever. 
-hmm. you know, is to, um, you know, give glory to him and to impress him. You know, and impress God. So, what is the what are the ways that you stay focused on God? Um, probably by I know this sounds cliche, but coming to church is a real big thing. Having a standard and having that stableness, because even reading your Bible sometimes can get we get too busy to do it. But mm -hmm. coming to church has always been a stable place for me to come and know that I'm going to come and be able to. Just refocus. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What are your uh, dreams and, and prayers for your generation? You know, what, what would you like to see people your age do more of? Um, I think that people my age have become very just upset at the church sometimes because we tend to, during worship, we, you know, are scared to come out of just sitting down or not doing anything I'd like to see that worship come back and us get excited you know so that um, we can just have that worship again and not be scared of what people think mm -hmm. on Wednesday nights I know you're a part of a great group that is pursuing the Lord with Elevate so you want to give an invitation for that yeah <laughs> um, Wednesday nights at 630 we have Elevate Youth and we have great games and we have great worship and we always come a little early just to hang out and it's just a great group of people. Sometimes we acquaint, you know, uh, or equate uh, worshiping Jesus, following Jesus, being a Christian with it being dull, boring, you know, just everybody sitting in a room. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. And, um, and it's so much more. I mean, it's a journey. You've already traveled to three different places that were totally beyond what, you know, you couldn't have done that on your own. God took you to Africa. He took you to Mexico. He took you to the Philippines. He's not done yet, but it's because you gave your heart to him. Well, thank you, Amelia, for sharing about your journeys and, and everything that you are. Your daddy and I are proud of you. We thank our viewers tonight. Comment on ilovemyvictory.com. Let her know what you think about her story. And let's bring some encouragement to one another. ilovemyvictory.com. And thank you again, Amelia Grace Duran, for joining us tonight. And thank you for being with us. Wow, it's so good to see, um, you know, your kids when they're excited about the Lord. Uh, I know our Heavenly Father, He thinks that way about you and I as we are serving Him and following after Him. He is, you know, it excites Him. He's a, he's a loving Father. And as a loving Father, to see your daughter excited about the Lord and what God's done in her life up until this point, it really is awesome to see. You know, she's had quite the experience, and it may not be your experience, but can I tell you that God wants to meet with you? He wants to do special things for you. Um, you know, sometimes we think about God in terms of just church and, and, uh, and just going to a building on a Sunday or Wednesday, but you know, it really is a relationship. It really is a father-son, father-daughter relationship. And while you may not have had a great uh, father-son, father-daughter relationship, uh, can I tell you that you can still have that in our Heavenly Father? So good to see, you know, our daughter mm -hmm. excited about the Lord. It's so good to see her, uh, you know, be willing to, at 16, share her mm -hmm. story. Yeah. We care about teenagers and mm -hmm. young people. You know, I grew up in a church that while there are wonderful things happening for the adults, I didn't personally have any kind of uh, you know, youth leader or person in my life that I could re gain some spiritual understanding from. And it's so important to us. I don't take that or blame them for that. I take that and, you know, and I want mm. to provide that for young people today. Mm. Had I known all the exciting things that could have been happening in my life at a young age, uh, my life would have been, you know, a little bit different. So I encourage you, you know, Sometimes we don't know how to relate to the younger generation. And here's just some things that I know you and I have implemented. You know, we keep communication open with our kids. We don't let them get locked away. Even children in our church, kids, teenagers in our church, 
I don't let them get locked <laughs> away. I take them. I'm like, we're going to have some, some time together, you know, having fun, building relationship, but keep communication lines open. And another thing is bring God into everyday living. You know, I remember early on when our children were little, we would be in church services and it would be the smallest thing that, you know, seemingly the smallest thing I would do, but I would lean down to my kids during worship and I'm like, so you hear these words we're singing, you know, and I would say, you know, the Bible says that angels encamp around us. Do you happen to see any angels? And I would awaken their senses mm. to the things that could be happening in our midst because where two or three are gathered, the Bible says that Jesus is there. And, and I think that really helped them to grasp hold. I would do it in Walmart. We would look for people. I would say, you know, kids, we're going in Walmart or in Winn-Dixie or wherever we were at, at any store. And I'd say, you know, we learned that Jesus, he would lay hands on the sick and he would ask people for prayer. And I would tell the kids, I'm like, you know, if you see anybody today, I'll walk up there with you, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to pray for them. And we would have all kind of activities like that happening. But we love and care about raising up a generation. They need to know that Christ is is for them today. That's right. Not for when they get become an adult. That's right. You know, the Bible speaks about that. And Paul writing to Timothy, and here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, and uh, verse 12, it says this. I'm reading from the NIV version. It simply says this. Don't let anyone look down upon you because you are young, but rather set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. So again, looking at that, it simply says that we're not to look down upon or have anybody else look down upon. Paul's in encouraging Timothy. Mm -hmm. Look, don't let anybody look down upon you. Yeah. But let our words, our faith, our love, what we're saying, what we're doing, let it be an encouragement to everybody else. And, you know, I'm encouraged by the young generation. I see, you know, whether it's the millennials or even younger, it is there are yeah. kids out there that are on fire for God and they're learning their way. Mm -hmm. They might be doing it a little bit different than what I did when I was, you know, uh, 20, 25, 30 years old. But, you know, they are hungry for the same father mm -hmm. that I serve, that I love. And, you know, Amelia is excited about mm -hmm. God. She's excited about those that are lost on the mission field, especially the orphans. You know, she was so excited about just, you know, going and seeing um, those that were orphaned. Yeah. And she is um, had the opportunity already at 16 to experience that and see people that were a little less fortunate. And I remember when mm -hmm. she came back, you know, how it it touched me that she says, you know, I just wanted to love on them. Yeah. You know, that's what our Father in Heaven wants to do with us. Yeah. He just wants to love on us. Yeah, it may be hard for some people to believe, but you and I were once teenagers. Wow. I know, two years ago. Was almost, yeah, it yeah. was a very, yeah. very short time ago. That's right. We were teenagers. And, you know, I remember in high school, a group of teenagers, um, actually some of the cheerleaders, they had gone to a church service, and they got really set on fire for the Lord. They started bringing their Bibles to school. They started talking to us, inviting us to uh, go to church with them or to pray with them or read Bibles during break time. And I think back how foolish I was not to jump on board because Amelia said one of the struggles that teenagers face is they care so much about what others think. Mm. And I think I cared so much. I didn't exactly know how to cross over from how I was living to the life I knew I was called to live right. because God was always drawing me. He was always there. He wasn't pushing me away, and he's not pushing you away. If you're watching this, teenagers, you just need to know where to plug in. And um, I would say start with going to church <laughs> and find the church that feeds your soul. And I love that I have a lot of friends that, you know, maybe they prefer one type of worship, but they're not afraid to send their kids to another type, another church, you know, so that we gain what we need. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Get yourself in the right place, surrounded by the right people, and, and let God have your life because He knows what to do with it when we don't. That's right. You know, it's interesting that you talk about high school, and I grew up, like probably many of us, I went to church from time to time and um, even got involved in a youth group for a period of time. But 
I didn't really feel like I had anybody that was pulling me in. So I was always chasing that identity. I was always chasing um, kind of to be one of the guys that fit in with everybody. You know, I had one friend that um, I, I actually contacted about three weeks ago and I called him on the phone. I was on a long drive with work and it was just, it was on me to call him. And I called him and I said, listen, I just wanted to thank you again that when we were in high school, um, you were always trying to encourage me to to follow after Christ. And, you know, I didn't know that I, uh, you know, I just didn't want to go down that road at that particular time. And I said, I just want to thank you for never giving up on me. And even into my young adulthood, and certainly even now, you know, 30 years later, uh, I am walking with Christ. But a lot of the seeds that were planted, it was planted by a friend that simply said, you know, God's got a better way for you. He was not harsh with me. He was not ugly with me. He would invite me to church, and oftentimes I turned him down. Uh, but I saw something in him. And what I saw in him is what I believe Paul was talking to Timothy about, his speech, right? His faith, his purity, his love, his action spoke that he was living something different. And I always wanted that. And so don't give up on your friends. And you know what? Get hungry. Get hungry for more of God. Find, you know, a youth group here in town, uh, young people. Get involved with what uh, what God is wanting to do because he has a plan and he does have a purpose. And I know that sounds cliche so so often, but God's got something special for you. And I hope you'll find that. Well, let's pray together tonight before we close out. Dear Heavenly Father, so grateful for just the testimony that came forward tonight, the story of Amelia and her missions involvement and how you have reached into her life. God, I pray that those that are watching tonight would be encouraged and strengthened by the stories they've heard here tonight, that they would know that you love them, that you still have something great for them. We thank you that you're a God that fills us with hope and you encourage us to live each day for you. Those that may be down, those that may be uh, feeling less than their best right now, I do pray that you would touch them right where they're at. And God, I pray that they would find a place where they can plug in and worship you freely. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let me say to you that we do want to invite you to Victory Family Church. Uh, we worship on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. at 3225 Headland Avenue. And we're excited that we have an opportunity to come into the homes here in the Wiregrass area. Uh, please, um, you know, continue to reach out to us through ilovemyvictory.com. All kinds of great information about our church, things that are going on here in the city. Again, ilovemyvictory.com. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon.